Niven, Patrick Metcalf, Dominic Zator, Mark Village, Will Seymour, and Tommy Gardner. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Good afternoon, a beautiful sunny day here at the University of British Columbia as we bring you Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 and Swope Park Rangers, a nooner at the bird. Brendan Batchelor alongside Michael McCall will have the call of the match for you today and we'll get into the players to watch. Now let's start with the visitors and Nansel Selball who could be a threat to score today. Definitely a very fast player, three goals, one assist on the year. Scored his first goal of the season against the Caps at Swope Park in the game in May, one to watch for sure. 
For the Whitecaps, Marco Bustos will come in in midfield, and he's been consistent in his ability to score in the USL this year. Yeah, five games, five goals, four penalties, but they still count. And he's he's a guy that needs to take his opportunities. He's a guy that needs to show what he's got at this level and try and force his team or force his way back into the first team mix. He'll be a part of the attacking side for Whitecaps FC2 today. Thomas Sanner will play alone up front. We'll get you the starting 11s when we come back after this for the kickoff. Back to UBC's Thunderbird Stadium, a sunny afternoon for Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 and Swope Park Rangers. Brandon Bachelor and Michael McCall back with you for the call of the match today. And let's take a quick look at the starting 11s for both sides, starting with the visitors from Swope Park Rangers. And they really have a good attacking three. They're playing a 4 3 3, as you can see there. Nancel Selball, Mark Anthony Gonzalez, and Kevin Oliveira are going to provide a threat going forward. It's a very offensive lineup that they've got out there. There's goals all over this team, and especially this front three, who between them this year have been banging the goals in. Adrian Zendejas on loan from Sporting Kansas City will start in net. Meanwhile, for Vancouver Whitecaps FC2, as I mentioned before, Thomas Sanner alone up front, but you know that Marco Bustos and Ben McKendry will be an attacking threat in behind him, and then out wide, Nazim Bartman and Gloria Amanda should get forward too. Yeah, I kind of expect this to break down at times into a 4-3-3 with Bartman and Amanda supporting Sanner up front. It's an attacking lineup as well from the Caps, so I think this should be an end-to-end -end game today. Lots of goals in store and hopefully a very entertaining match. We should also mention that today's match plays an important role in the close partnership between Major League Soccer and the USL to test the use of the Video Assistant Referee, or VAR. The VAR will be implemented during key match-changing situations and serious missed incidents on the field as we get a look at the two head coaches there, Rich Fagan for Whitecaps FC2. Uh, that's going to be interesting, though, the VAR in effect. And uh, for me, anyway, I really hope we get to see it implemented because it's going to be interesting. You see on your screen there, right at the bottom at center field uh, is where the video reviews will take place if they are necessary, again, for those serious match-changing incidents. Yeah, they can't use it for everything. Uh, they can use it to review goals. They can use it for penalties, cases of mistaken identity. And one thing to note as well, the players and the coaches cannot ask for a video review. And if a player is seen to gesture for it, he can get a booking. If a coach is seen to gesture for it, he can actually be dismissed from the sidelines. Direct red cards, another scenario where it can be used straight reds but otherwise as you mentioned goals penalty decisions or mistaken identity so uh, that will potentially play a factor in the match it's going to be interesting to see if it does this afternoon whitecaps fc2 in the white shirts white shorts white socks and sean melvin the goalkeeper in a full black kit today they are going to attack the goal to our broadcast right the visitors swope park rangers orange shirts White shorts and orange sh socks will attack the goal to our left. And Adrian Zendejas, the 21-year-old Chula Vista, California native, in a full neon green kit in goal. Swope Park Rangers have been going well of late. 
They picked up a 4-0 win on Saturday night against Rio Grande Valley FC, tying a club record so they can set a club record with a win over Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 this afternoon. Yeah, they're going for five straight wins. They're coming into this match undefeated in seven. They're one of the form teams just now in USL West. Five clean sheets in the year, so a third of their matches they've managed to keep the opposition off the score sheet. 14 points off the top and really pushing to get back to another Western Conference final. And they have us underway this afternoon. Again, a nooner at the bird and lots of school-age children here in attendance for the match today. It's going to create a bit of a different atmosphere. Yeah, it's loud already. There's a lot of youth groups in. It's great to see. It's the, the future of football in, in this team, in this country. Get the kids out to watch these games, get them hooked, and then get them back for more. As Parker Marr plays a ball along the near touchline, Caden Chung at right back for Whitecaps FC2, a Canadian in his own right, 18-year-old Port Coquitlam product played it out into touch. There's Nancel Selball trying to work the ball through midfield, and this could be dangerous. Getting forward is Mark Anthony Gonzalez, lost possession. And that'll roll out of play on the far side. Gonzalez, 22 years old from Toronto, in the Swope Park Rangers side, leads the club with five goals. Came through TFC's academy, but it's also a product of the fantastic Sigma club. They've produced so many great Canadian players over the years. He's one to watch, leading the team. And there's 11 goals from these front three so far this season. Parker Marr, the left back again. Long ball forward. Christian Duke running on to that. Couldn't create an opportunity. He has two goals of his own right this year. And Swope Park Rangers are forced back into their own half. And it will be rolled through to the keepers in Dejas. The two center backs, Liam Doyle and Amir Jidic, controlling the ball. And you're already seeing David Norman kind of pushing forward a little bit. He's playing the holding role, but he's a guy that likes to go box to box and get forward. He's, uh, he's one of the players to watch today for the Whitecaps. It is a 4-1-4-1 formation for Rich Fagan's Whitecaps FC2 with Sander alone up front. Four across the midfield, and then David Norman Jr. in a holding midfield role in front of the back four. Six Canadians in the starting lineup as well today. Three teenagers, so they've been doing well. They're getting a lot of experience this season, and this is one of their biggest tests, I think, that they've faced over the last few weeks. Mar again, the left back getting forward, loses possession, and Marco Bustos will scamper through midfield. Protects the ball. Caden Chung looking to get forward as well. Gloria Amanda in possession. We talked about Bustos off the top and his consistency in the USL this year. You mentioned it too. He really does want to push forward and be a player that can contribute for the Whitecaps at the MLS level now in his third professional season. As of yet, hasn't quite found the opportunity to do that. It's tough for him because he's playing in a, in a position where he's got the likes of Christian Bolanias, Jordi Reyna, Nicolas Mosquita ahead of him. He's best as a number 10. They have had a look at him in a couple of games out wide where he hasn't maybe performed to as good as we've seen him over the years. But he needs to use these games to put questions in Kyle Robinson's mind and kind of show that he does deserve to be in the first team mix. Did make substitutes, uh, substitution appearances rather in the Canadian Championship semi-final back in May. But hasn't had a consistent look at Major League Soccer. Kyle Robinson's talked about getting a lot of these guys possibly out on loan. We saw it already, Kyle Gregg's gone out on loan this week. Bustos is another one whose name's kind of been mentioned as a possible loan deal. He needs to be challenged. He does get challenged at this level. He's got five goals, four of them from the spot. He is clinical from there. But he, he, I think he just needs a little bit more testing. Sell ball, looking to get forward down that left side. Cole Seiler playing at center back, ushers that ball out of play. And it'll be a throw in in the attacking third for the visitors, Swope Park Rangers. And a new look centre back pairing today as well, with Sam DeWitt being transferred to FC Cincinnati this week. So we've got Francis De Vries and Cole Seiler marshalling the middle of the defence. My mistake, it is a Whitecaps throw in, and now we have a foul, but I'll give Swope Park a free kick. 
As you mentioned, no Sem DeVitt, and that's why you think a, a veteran, at least at this level, and Cole Seiler is back to help out in the middle of defense. Yeah, I mean, Seiler's a guy that he's in his second year now with the Whitecaps organization. He's another one that needs to kind of show that he does deserve to be in the first team mix. With Kendall Waston being away with Costa Rica for a bulk of this month, you've got Christian Dean and possibly Cole Seiler trying to play themselves into a starting position in the MLS team. Speaking of which, a good result for the Canadians at the Gold Cup last night as Declan Wynn plays that ball out of a dangerous area in the box. As mentioned, Canada and Costa Rica drawing one all in Gold, Club, Gold Cup group play yesterday, so Canada remains top of their group. Fantastic performance from them. I mean, to, to get the goal, another goal from Alfonso Davies. As it is into the box, there's Silva with his right foot and blocked away by DeVries. First corner kick of the match, or is it going to be a goal kick? It's a goal kick. It is indeed. Didn't take a touch, but dangerous there from Swell Park. Yeah, I mean, they, they can move the ball around so quickly. They're, they're doing their last year's Western Conference finalists and winners. And they're doing better at this half of the season than they did when they actually won the conference last year. They've got five more goals in last year, three more wins and more points than they did in 2016. So this is a team that is looking to capitalise on what they did last year. They're under a new head coach, they've got a few new additions, but they're still a very, very, very dangerous outfit. Nine wins from 15 matches on the season, 29 points. As mentioned, looking for a club record fifth consecutive victory this afternoon. And they've got goals all over this team. Ten different players have scored for Swope Park so far this year. Gonzalez, the guy that is leading them. But Kevin Oliveira as well, three goals and four assists. He's a, a guy that the Whitecaps can't afford any space to. Came through the Benfica youth system and looking to try and earn himself an MLS deal, you have to feel. And it has been Swope Park that have bossed the play to this point. And could this be another opportunity? Into the box, getting forward, and a nice save. Then another one. Tremendous from Sean Melvin on two opportunities for Swope Park Rangers. This will be a corner kick, and uh, earning his pay early on in the match is Sean Melvin. Great work there. Great double save from him here, and that just shows you, though, how fast the Swope Park Rangers team is. I mean, the, the way that they just turned that attack on there, it, it, the White Cats defense really has to be on their guard today. It was Oliveira on the first chance, sell ball on the second opportunity. Both held out by Sean Melvin, the Victoria product. They still continue to threaten, though. Nice header away from Gloria Amanda, relieving the danger, if only for a moment. Wave after wave of attack coming just now from Swope. This one is played out wide, and Oliveira can't bring that in. A gold kick. Or is it going to be a throw in as the referee points to the sideline? It must have just rolled out this side of the corner flag. Yeah, it looked like it had just gone out, but it's quite far up as well, so it must have gone out there. As we get another look, at first the save on Oliveira, then the stop on Selball, just getting his right foot on that one was Melvin. Melvin's had a really good year so far, sharing minutes with Spencer Ritchie and He's definitely put himself in the frame for having further looks within this White Caps organization. Graduate of the residency program. Eight starts last year in his rookie season in USL. 80% save percentage. For the Victoria keeper who had some pressure there from cell ball, but collected the ball calmly. And Early, the Whitecaps defense has been tested. It has bent, but not broken thus far. Yeah, they've not really had a chance to get much of an attack going themselves. They've not really had much of the ball to do that. And if they can soak up this pressure early on and then try and regroup and find their, their rhythm, it's not, not happening so far, but you kind of have to feel with the attacking presence that they've got, especially in the midfield, if they can just get a little bit of time in the ball, they will get themselves into this. And they do have players with pace. Bartman and Amanda playing out wide in the midfield, and both of them, if they get the opportunity, of course, you have to be in possession and not be back defending. But maybe you can hit on the counter if they are pressuring up the park, Swope Park Rangers. 
I think that's definitely what the, the Caps are looking to do today. Marr back into midfield for Christian Duke. And a little bit of a miscommunication there that is saved from going out for a corner kick by Melvin. As maybe DeVries and Wynn getting a little bit of their wires crossed in the box. A pair of Kiwis, two in the starting lineup today. Also Meyer Bevan on the bench. And Wynn. Product of New Zealand, as you mentioned, from Auckland. Recently returning from the Confederations Cup, where he started against Russia and Mexico. Yeah, he did well. Didn't get the start against Portugal in the last game, so didn't get his chance to go up against Ronaldo, which I, speaking to him before he headed off, he was looking forward to that opportunity. But fantastic experience, and he's going to look to draw on that. And after a couple of seasons with the Whitecaps, where he's had injuries and he's been away on international duty, this is his chance to really show what he's got to Carl Robinson in the first team. Was involved with the Canadian Championship games as well and gave a good account of himself when he came on as a sub. 11th minute, nil nil. Swope Park Rangers and Vancouver Whitecaps FC2, a matinee, a Wednesday matinee at that here at UBC's Thunderbird Stadium. One of two this year, another one coming up in August as well here at Thunderbird. And as we touched on off the top, the video assistant referee being tested in this match here today. Expected to be implemented in Major League Soccer going forward. As Marco Bustos gets it out wide to Gloria Amanda. This could be an opportunity. Amanda curls it into Bartman. Top of the box on the far side. He has to play it back for a win. Now here's Bartman again in field for Bustos. Three orange shirts around and played it back to David Norman again for Amanda out on the wide area on the right side. A little bit of skill there to dance around Parker Marr and wins a free kick in a very dangerous part of the pitch. And it's the first opportunity of the day for the Whitecaps to really test the, the defense here of Swope Park Rangers. They've been good at their delivery. David Norman's been on fire the last couple of games with his set piece delivery. So look for him to swing this in, try and find the big man, Thomas Sander, at the back of the box here. Bustos will also stand behind it. So we'll see who it is that decides to hit it. Bustos is going to step away. And as you said, a left footed in swinger is what we can expect here. And that's what we get from Norman. Was he going for goal there? I think Maybe. He might. Just over the bar, though, and it remains nil nil. A little bit of a wasted opportunity. The Caps haven't had much so far. They kind of need to make the ones that do pay. Went for goal there. There is a, quite a strong wind on the pitch. I'm not sure if you can see it on the broadcast, but the corner flags are really flying quite, quite wildly. Possession conceded in midfield. McKendry gets it to Bartman out wide on that left side. Looking to cut infield. Tried to roll it across towards Chung and Amanda. Split both of them. Amanda fell into the pitch, and that's a cell ball up the left side. Collided with David Norman Jr., but won a throw in. Nice tackle from David Norman there. He's one booking away from a suspension, so he, he does need to watch himself today, but he has a tough tackling midfielder. Carlton Belmar also on accumulation warning from Swope Park Rangers on the bench this afternoon. As the visitors may be trying to calm things down a little bit after being under the cosh for a few moments. Content to play in possession at the moment. Lebo Meloto plays it ahead in field. James Musa sends that wide of the target from a long ways out. And from what we've seen so far, Swope Park Rangers are trying to get their fullbacks up the wings and test both the, the Caps fullbacks. Parker Mars has been allowed a lot of room on one side and then Dakota Barnathan on the, the left as well is on the right rather he's getting a lot of room as well and Wen and Chung need to close these guys down. Win 22 years old, Chung 18. 
And indeed, that seems to be the game plan for Nikola Popovich's side. As they look to cut open Whitecaps, too. Busy week for Vancouver. They'll play again on Saturday here at Thunderbird. Yeah, and hopefully a good crowd coming out for that as well. Have to give a, a mention as well to the under 16s who are heading down to Los Angeles for their USSDA Final Four semi final on Friday. One of the USL guys, Michael Baldissimo, going down for that one with him. He's still eligible to play for the under-16s, <laughs> which is quite incredible to think, as would Alfonso Davies have been if, if he was here. Absolutely, and I was just going to mention, we talked about Canada's draw against Costa Rica. Davies now with three goals in two games with the Canadian national men's team. You don't want to put too much hype and too much pressure on him, but it's hard when he's turning in performances like that, he's going to get attention. Named today to the MLS squad for the All-Star homegrown game as well. So another opportunity for him to get showcased on the big stage. Did get a knock at the end of the game yesterday, but Octavio Zambrano said he's going to be good to go. He may not start him against Honduras and keep him more for the knockout stages, but he's he's been phenomenal in his games for Canada so far. Got a chance myself to see the game in person on Friday night in New Jersey. And tremendous for him. This could be tremendous for Marco Bustos getting forward. Wide to Bartman has a go with his right foot over the bar. And a touch on that. Was there a touch on it from Zendejas? Looked like it from here, but I think it's going to be a goal kick. A better opportunity you will not see for Nazim Bartman, though. Yeah, it was a great opportunity. Bustos with a nice play inside to Bartman. Hit it first time. If he'd maybe just steadied himself, but he's a known goal scorer. He's had a great record at college level. He's a very confident guy, but it was a very fast break. That's what the Whitecaps need to do here. And they've shown they can get in and test this back line. They just need to do it a little bit more. It does feel like a match that could have goals in it, but for a quarter of an hour or a couple minutes more, we haven't seen any yet. Although there have been great opportunities at both ends of the park. It's an open game. Both teams liking to play this ball and attacking, so it should be entertaining for this crowd. And Thunderbirds really starting to fill up nicely. As mentioned, the majority of fans in attendance. School age children, I think I see a couple of summer camps here. With all wearing matching colored t shirts. Hoping that the white caps can draw first blood against the visitors from Swope Park Rangers. It's certainly loud. <laughs> Lively. And they're getting an entertaining match so far as well. As the Whitecaps look to play out from the back, Thomas Sandra, the target man, flicks that forward. And here's Bartman away down the left side. Bustos in midfield. Bartman into the box. Plays it in. Sander darting forward. Couldn't get a touch on the ball. And Zendejas claims it. Great break from Bartman there. Showing his, his pace. Thought he'd maybe carried it too far. But nice little flick inside to Sana, who just couldn't fully connect with that. But Caps really testing Swope Park Rangers in these last few minutes. After Swope Park tested them in the opening minutes. As you said, an open match almost feels like a boxing match where the sides may trade blows back and forth, and we'll see who comes out with more points at the end of it. Yeah, it feels like a good old-fashioned cup tie more than a, a league game. Swope Park looking to get forward again. And Declan Wynn defending well. The goal kick, they'll say it went off. The striker from Swope Park, Kevin Oliveira. Just getting a look again at Sanner's chance. Just couldn't get a chance to connect with it there. But a nice run by Bartman. He needs to do that. He's got lots of pace. He has got a finish on him as well. At one point was touted as being the next Dom Dwyer just because of how he's come through over from South Africa. Came through the same colleges as Dwyer. He's a very confident young man. I had a chat with him when he first came here and a fascinating backstory. 
his, his family had to raise money for him to afford his flight to come over. And at the last minute, the money, the guy that was going to give them the money said he didn't have it. So then they had to go around the community to try and get money so he could even get his flight. And the one thing he really wants to do is pay everyone back. So he, he doesn't want to have any debt to anyone. And he just wants to take this opportunity. Now in the 21st minute this afternoon, nil nil. Whitecaps FC2 and Swift Park Rangers. If you are just joining us, thanks for joining us. And we remind you, you can stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune into USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts Mondays at 6 o'clock Pacific time on Sirius XM FC Channel 85. Also, don't forget, Sirius XM FC airs the USL Game of the Week. Check USLsoccer.com for dates and times as sell ball again. On the left side of the attacking three getting forward, and Sean Melvin again out to claim the ball. Whitecaps defense have certainly been tested so far, and Siler and DeVries, they're trying to do a lot of long balls over and trying to run through those two. The fullback positions, I, I still think, are where they might be the most success for Swope Park Rangers. As Christian Duke plays a long ball towards the end of the area. Cell ball wins it back in midfield, and he'll dunk into the box. Cuts in field with a right-footed straight right at Melvin, makes another confident save. Chung easily pushed off the ball there, and it, it's something that Chung he needs to kind of build up a little bit. It's hard. He's, he's quite a quite a light right back, and we saw it a couple of times last year that he was targeted by a number of teams because they, they see him as a, a slighter figure. But he has got the pace and he's got the skill, and he's he's very kind of misleading. With just looking at him, you don't expect him to be as physical as he is. But he was easily pushed off the ball there. Declan Wynn out on the. Left flank will roll it back to Francis DeVries. McKendry for Siler and then Chunk. Gloria Amanda cutting forward, plays it for Santa, who is ruled offside. But it was a good ball into him. Yeah, they've not really had a chance to get Amanda involved much so far today. As we see Cell Ball winning the ball off Chung again. And the opportunity didn't really test Sean Melvin, but to your point again, Caden Chung can't get pushed off the ball like that. Yeah, I mean, Cell Ball was the, the guy we talked about at the start from Swope Park Rangers, one of their real danger men. 20-year-old Nigerian making his 10th start of the season. One Three of, goals to his name. One of ten players on the Swope Park Rangers squad that's come through the Sport in Kansas City Academy. They're a club like the Whitecaps that are really giving, using this team to give their their residency and their academy guys a chance to develop further and show what they can do at this level. Zlebo Meloto tries to get forward. Parker Marr with the ball. Rolled in field for Selball again, who's dispossessed by Siler, and the break could be on. Got it forward to Santa, referee playing advantage on a handball, and Bartman's away down the left side again. Overlapping run by Wynn. Tries to curl it in, blocked away. And the second time, sends it to the back post. Gloria Amanda will bring it down. And protect it from Mar as he runs back towards the touchline. And wins the throw in. That break all started with a fantastic work there from Cole Siler, winning the ball in the middle of the park, showing a lot of strength to, to set that up. Nice pace by Bartman as well. Siler for DeVries and again to win. Pressure by Oliveira. Ball out of the reach of Gloria Man will concede possession a little bit cheaper. A couple of cheap giveaways from DeVries so far to start this game. He looks a little bit unorthodox. He's a kind of a gangly player, but he is a good defender. He's very vocal, wearing the captain's armband today with Sim having moved on. 
clattering challenge there from David Norman Jr. on Christian Duke. The captain for Shore Park Rangers. Have a look at it again here. Good challenge, though. Yeah. Won the ball for me there. Wasn't called for a foul or booked. As Oliveira rolls it through for Gonzalez. Pass ahead intended for Meloto. Was well behind him. As Amanda is tripped up. Or it looked like he was tripped up by Marr, but it's Swap Park Rangers that have earned the free kick. Quickly taken by James Musa. Now Oliveira in midfield. Ken McKendry wins possession. For Whitecaps FC2. And back they go the other way. Sanner looked like he was chopped down there. But our match referee, David Gantar, waves play on. Sanner's not really had a, a chance to do much today. He's not had the ball at all. All the, the breaks forward so far for Whitecaps coming from the wing. A lot of it up the left, but it's hard. DeVries back to pressure Gonzalez into putting the ball out of play. And you talk about the pace in midfield, and it makes you wonder whether Meyer Bevan is a natural replacement for Sanner in the second half if the Whitecaps haven't had any joy getting forward because he's a player that has a bit of that pace as well. Yeah, that, that would look like one of the, the more obvious ones, but they may go for a change of formation depending on how the game's going. Amanda's not really got into this at all just now, so he might be a guy that they, they look to either switch positions with Bartman or possibly see him replaced in the second half. But some good options on the bench for the Whitecaps today. Thomas Gardner as well, a guy that can bring a lot to this game. Only six subs on the bench today. Christian Dean originally penned to, to be in this and then a slight change at the end, so they didn't replace him. And as you mentioned, Dean may be needed with the MLS side, with Kendall lost in a way at the Bolton. Yeah, good opportunity for, for Christian Dean to, to try and re-establish himself in the first team mix, just returning from his latest injury. And he's looked good at training. He played in the game at the weekend, the 2-2 draw that the Caps had at Colorado Springs switchbacks, and gave quite a good performance. Now here's McKendry forward, Bustos to his left, rolls it through for Sanner, can he hold it in? Yes, but stopped by the keeper as he just played it away from the byline. More of a desperation attempt to keep it in play, and Zendejas collects. That's what Ben McKendry can do. I like to see him power forward. He's one of the really good box-to-box -box midfielders that the Caps have, and he's had a really good season so far. Now Meloto towards Selball. Left edge of the area. Plays it back into midfield. Little dummy there from Duke to let the ball roll through, but the Whitecaps are able to clear. Now Jidic. Out wide onto the right side. Played into Duke in midfield again. The captain. Now with Marr. A little bit of a heavy pass from James Musa. And to settle things down, they'll play it back deep into their own half. And I think both teams will be glad to see this settle down a bit. The defense is, they've not had a chance to breathe so far. It's just been going from end to end. But both of them doing well. Both of them standing strong and still no goals yet. Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit nikesoccer.com. As it has been a frenetic pace to the match, as we near the half hour mark, and the question is, is it, can the two teams remain uh, playing so quickly throughout yeah. the rest of the game? Two young sides. And now here's Cell Ball in behind, offside though. Flag comes up from the assistant referee on the far touchline immediately. Could have been dangerous, but the run not timed to perfection. No, and I actually thought Cell Ball had been offside in the move that, that led up to that, but he managed to time that one better than, than the second attempt. But the pace of this, if it keeps up, it's going to be great for everyone watching here and at home. Very entertaining so far. And it's a great test for Whitecaps too. They've struggled in their last couple of games against Swope Park Rangers. 
lost the Western Conference final last year, 3-0 down there. Lost the game in May, 3-1 down there in Kansas as well. Here's McKendry again, darting up the right side. Back for Gloria Amanda, who has lost his footing a couple of times here in the first half, and you wonder if there could be a change of footwear in store for him, because we've seen him take a few spills. Not this time, though. He gets forward, plays it in field. Here's Bustos with his left foot just over the bar. Marco Bustos very nearly makes it 1-0 for the Whitecaps. Great pass by Amanda to find him back at the edge of the area, and he just skies it over the bar. Fantastic cutback from Amanda there. First time we've really seen him get into the box and show what he can do. First time left-footed strike inches over the crossbar. Very well struck by Bustos there as well. He got right behind it just a little bit too high, but that will give him confidence. He's a guy that likes to shoot, and we've seen there that he, he definitely has a good foot in him. It'll give Whitecaps two confidence as well, as they have had a number of quality chances. Oliveira with the ball. Passes ahead, no teammates in the vicinity, out for a goal kick. And I talked about the, the game on the 5th of May. Swope Park Rangers won that one 3-1. They got off to such a quick start. Three first half goals. It looked like they were going to try and do that again today. In the opening minutes, Swope Park really took the game to the Whitecaps. But the last couple of minutes, the Whitecaps have definitely had a number of good opportunities here. They have grown into the game. They spent about the first 10 minutes entirely on the back foot, but they've had their tails up over the last couple of minutes, as you said. And it's a tale of two different teams form-wise as well heading into this. We talked about Swope Park Rangers' great form, undefeated in seven. Whitecaps winless in five, We're looking to get back into the win column. And if they can get this against a very good team, get themselves closer to the playoff space spots in the West, then that will give them a good boost for the second half of the USL season to come. Whitecaps coming off a two-all draw with Colorado Springs switchbacks on Saturday. So I mentioned a busy week for them. It'll be Saturday, Wednesday, and Saturday again. Although back-to-back -back games at home without the travel will help. Yeah, that will really help. And it's a thin squad at the moment with guys injured, guys away. You kind of wonder if there might be a few more additions to come in the summer transfer window, maybe a few more academy call-ups after how well the 16s and the 18s have done in the residency this year. And I'll be interested to see if it's a very much changed starting 11 for Saturday. You do possibly wonder whether Bevan, starting on the bench today, he did get his first start on Saturday, and he might be getting kept for the game that's coming Saturday. Maloto, with the ball at his feet, rolls it in field for James Musa. Now here's Oliveira, who's actually come back into midfield quite a lot. Did have the one opportunity getting forward early on, but has had to track back to help out more often than not. He's been on the ball a lot in the last few minutes for sure. Sanner fouled at the halfway line. We'll take it quickly. Bustos forward up the left side. Amanda darting towards the edge of the area to his right. Lovely bit of skill by Bustos. In with his left foot off the crossbar. He bounces out. Amanda with a half volley. And tipped over the bar by the keeper, Adrian Zendejas. Whitecaps. Will feel very hard done by that they didn't score there. Bustos off the crossbar. And then Amanda on the second opportunity. Very nearly scored as well. Lovely little shimmy from Bustos in that first chance. And then the ball just took a little bit too long to get to Amanda. Just bounced. He just couldn't control it. But then he good to get it on frame. Tipped over. Pressure still on. Corner here. For David Norman Jr. to take. He's had some success from set pieces this year. DeVries. Tried to get his head on that, but it's knocked away by Christian Dew. Pressure still on for Whitecaps, too, though. Nice spell of pressure here. Here's the Bustos chance again. Straight down off the crossbar, and then Amanda pounded it right into the turf, and it bounced just over the bar. Amanda did well to get his shot off. He was under a lot of pressure there, and keeping the pressure on. But now a quick break here from Swope Park Rangers. As they look to... Hit back on the counter. That couldn't quite break away. 
Campbell again. Try to play out from the back in possession. Liam Doyle. Christian Duke back in support of the back four. Liam Doyle was an interesting guy. He's an Isle of Man international, which might surprise some people as the Isle of Man has an international <laughs> team. A little bit like French Guiana in that they're not FIFA members, but they do play in the island games and they, they have got a, a number of international caps under his belt for them. Duke forward to Musa. Watched by Bustos, passes back for Parker Marr. Marr to Musa, who rolls it back into his own half for Liam Doyle again. Doyle, 24 years of age, as you mentioned, from the Isle of Man, formerly of Harrisburg City Islanders in the USA. There's a good tackle there by Francis DeVries to send the ball out of play on the far touchline. I've mentioned this a couple of times so far, but Parker Marr in the left back position, he's getting left alone out there. They're just not finding him, which is good news for Whitecaps, but he's getting so much space. Amanda needs to be a lot closer to him. And Chung as well, although he's had a lot to deal with in Nancy cell ball getting forward on that side. And again, we see Marr is forward and not even in your screen right now in acres of space out wide, but as you said, they haven't found him and he hasn't had a chance to play any balls in so at the moment not a threat but a potential one for sure. Yeah. Maybe they know something about him that we don't so. <laughs> <laughs> Marco Bustos. Wins a free kick. DeVries. Plays pass with David Norman Jr. And we'll roll it through to Sam. Nice touch to Bustos. Wide for Nazim Bartman. Bartman onto his right foot. Back in field for Bustos. Got Declan Wynn in the wide area as well. Played into the box but cleared easily by Emir Jidic. Norman again. We'll go the field towards Amanda, headed out by Mark. Glory Amanda making his fifth appearance this season. Played with Alfonso Davies in Edmonton prior to their time with the Whitecaps. Both very good friends. I know Glory would really like to follow in Alfonso's footsteps and, and get himself a, an MLS contract. He's done well since signing. He's done well the last couple of seasons with the residency. I've watched him from the under-16s up, and he's always been a prolific goal scorer. Had a really good start to the season with the under-18s and earned this contract here, and he's, he's not looked out of place at this level either, which is going to be good for him and also for the Whitecaps. And went away with the under-18s for the USL Soccer Development Academy playoffs. Back with them now. With the residency under-18 team. Didn't have the best showing down there. It, it, it's hard, I think, for some of these guys to go up a level and then to go down a level. But it's all part of their testing. It's all part of their development just to see how they handle those situations. And it is a good setup that the Whitecaps have now in that a player like Gloria Amanda can get professional minutes while also developing at the under 18 level and even further down if you look at youngsters like an Alfonso Davies who played here last year at 15 years of age. Yeah, I mean, he really cut his teeth in the USL and you saw from playing in the USL last season that he definitely had what it took to play at a good level playing against guys sometimes more than twice his age and he's he's a guy that has no fear and you've seen it now with Canada it's like Octavio Zambrano said after the first match that he thinks that the age helps him because he doesn't think about what he the occasion is. know any better almost. Yeah. 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 Easy 
easily the greatest success story in Whitecaps FC2's history to this point anyway. Oh, for certain. Yeah, you do have to wonder if he keeps turning in these performances, how long the Whitecaps can keep hold of him, but make the most of him while you can, get out and see him play, because he's definitely one for the future. And there have been quiet rumors about interest internationally from big clubs. And it's going to be even more, because, I mean, clubs will watch MLS, but I think when you start to do it at international level and a worldwide audience at the Gold Cup, and against a team like Costa Rica as well... Ranked 26th going, in the world. Yeah, that's going to raise eyebrows. I mean, they've been at the World Cup. They did well last World Cup. They did well when they, they played last year in Copa America. So to I put in a performance like that... they went out in the quarterfinal against the Netherlands at the World Cup? I think possibly, yeah. And they, they look certain to, to qualify for another one as well. Here at UBC this afternoon, though, we are now in the 41st minute of a nil-nil draw in a game that could very well be two-all rather than nil-nil. Definitely a lot of chances. We wondered if the pace would keep up. It hasn't at the moment. It has dipped towards the end of the half. I'm pretty sure both defences will be quite pleased about that aspect. Both keepers as well, who have had work to do. Sean Melvin with a pair of saves on Kevin Oliveira and Nancy Selball back to back. And Adrian Zendejas saw a strike from Marco Bustos go off the crossbar moments ago before tipping the second chance from Glory Amanda just over. Both goalkeepers have been strong, definitely the men in the match so far, keeping it scoreless. Hard to believe the way that, that this game started, that we would be possibly heading to half-time with no goals. Whitecaps may have something to say about that, though, as they get forward. Barton infield for Bustos, out wide for Amanda. He's got space and time to cross it in to the back post. Can Sander get there? No, he can't. Goal kick. Just a little bit too close to the, the touchline there, but... We've seen it a couple of times now. They're looking to try and get the ball to the big man in the box, try and use Sanner's height. We've seen it a couple of times this year and last year as well. He is very clinical in the box. Give him a sniff and he does take his chances. Sometimes his positioning lets him down, but he's a goal scorer. And in a lot of ways, it's like they'll be happy if he's banging in a few goals. It doesn't matter as long as he gets his chance and he takes them. Oliveira with a long ball forward. Headed back by Wynn, but possession lost. Here's Oliveira getting forward. Right footed, great save by Melvin. Sell ball to the ball. And a good tackle foot in there from Caden Chung for a corner kick. But Sean Melvin again with a great save. Great stop for a big guy. He gets down very quickly, and it was a nice burst of pace there. Oliveira forward. Melvin fingertips to it. A good challenge by Chung there. Yeah, Oliveira's looked really dangerous uh, in this half. And I think if, if Swope Park's going to get anything happening, I think it's going to come through Oliveira. He will take the corner kick here in the 43rd minute. Headed away easily by DeVries. Who's still starting forward into midfield. As Marr will send it long towards Selball, who has asked lots of questions of the Whitecaps defense down that left side. Passes back for Gonzalez in field, right footed strike blocked away. Miloto had a couple of chances. Whitecaps deal with that pressure as Gonzalez was slow to get up in the area and is limping a bit. His play goes back the other way. Yeah, he definitely took a note there. That was a, a crunching tackle from DeVries, but some good defending. It's showing again the danger that Swift Park are if you just get a half chance in the box. Duke for cell ball again. Watched closely by Siler onto his right foot. Cuts back to his left. Plays it across the face of goal. Maloto couldn't get a touch on it, and Nazim Bartman is back in possession for Whitecaps FC2. Dangerous, though, from cell ball who has been, for my money anyway, probably the most lively player for Swope Park Rangers. Yeah, the front three, they look a real handful, and I think if the Cavs can get to halftime and kind of regroup a little bit, we may see a slight change in formation to try and, and maybe counter that, possibly go with two holding, go to a 4-2-3-1. Hey! 
or even a traditional 4-4-2 if you want to bring on Meyer Bevan up front. Now Chunk for Bustos. Buys himself some time and space with a nice little flick of the ball. Look to curl that one in with his left foot. Blocked away nicely by Jude. Who sends it away towards Meloto. Seiler back to deal with that. And after the ball was played forward, Duke called for a foul, I believe, on Chung. And the Whitecaps have a free kick in the attacking half. Actually, he trips up Bustos there. We see good angle of it there. And that is the halftime whistle, so no added time at the end of the first 45 minutes. There have been chances, and there has been a lot to talk about, but as of yet, it's Whitecaps FC 2 nil, Swope Park Rangers nil. We'll be back with the first half highlights in just a moment. Once you go upstairs, the second level is basically split in two halves. One is the first team half, and then the other is WFC2 and Academy. So it creates a separation and aspirational motivation to move towards the first team side. everything and and they put me next to a bunch of these Americans in here so I might need to change that up yo hablo espanol so oh next to the goalkeeper that definitely needs to change Come on. Oh, yeah. everything is controlled by this locker right here so every morning you have to come and tell me what list yeah. So far, it's really nice. The locker room's great. The locker room's really good. Definitely surprised me. Definitely surprised. I'm really happy. It's a European style with a lot of technology, and obviously for for us, how the club is taking care of the players, giving us the the tools to step every day in training. 
uh, with everything we need is, is, is fantastic. Style. Like open, you can see face to face. It's not always about wins, losses, draws, added time, missed tackles, clearances, possession, rivalries, goals, and assists. Sometimes it's about the people and the stories that shape them. Introducing the official Whitecaps FC podcast, Sideline Stories. In depth interviews with your favorite Whitecaps players and personalities. Hosted by me, Perry Solkowski. Show your ears some love. So nerve wracking. <laughs> we are privileged to have from Ghana a member of the Vancouver Whitecaps uh, and who will play on the Canadian national team, which is a wonderful thing as a newly minted Canadian. Citizen, so I want to pay special uh, uh, welcome to Alfonso Davies. Queen Elizabeth II. Queen Elizabeth II. Queen of Canada. Really exciting for everybody to see him joining the full men's national team now as a Canadian citizen. So I think uh, we're all very proud of Alfonso. Um, I'm sure his family's very proud. This is something my parents uh, they went through but they didn't, they didn't make it, so I'm glad I, I could do it for them and do it for the family. Coming to Canada is, is what we were dreaming as a family to get here. Now we're here that I'm excited that I'm a Canadian citizen. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. At work hey or at play, you're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Oh, hey, she's cute. Nice going, man. Things are going great for you. You've earned a night out. Good drinks, good friends. Yeah, <laughs> we can go ahead and call this a good night. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh, not smart. Yeah, I saw that coming. Say goodbye to her. Ouch, that'll hurt your bank account. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. I hope you like eating frozen dinners alone. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. the stakes. Expectations are high. Our biggest season yet will break records with elite players and future stars. Innovative technology, 
and new homes. We're growing the game in our communities and across the nation. Are you ready? We built the USL into the largest Division II professional soccer league in the world. And now the time has come to announce USL Division III, America's professional third division league, completing the U.S. pro soccer landscape. It's time for your town, your team, your game. D3 will fuel local pride and local passion creating a new legacy for the beautiful game and inspiring its tribal following across the country. This is professional soccer, built on a disciplined financial model and operational excellence, featuring exciting venues to thrill fans in hungry new markets yearning for the game. USL Division Three, professional, passionate, proven. Pro soccer starts here, coming in 2019. For more information, visit USLD3.com. Back at UBC's Thunderbird Stadium, halftime and nil-nil between Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 and Swope Park Rangers. Brendan Batchelor back with you to be rejoined by Michael McCall in just a minute. But for now, let's take a look at the highlights from an entertaining and back and forth first half that saw chances for both teams, but no goals. As of yet, early on, it was the Whitecaps under pressure. Oliveira forward, stopped by Melvin. Sell ball with the second opportunity. Melvin with a great diving save, getting across to his right. The Whitecaps keeper tested early. Then sell ball, nicked the ball away from Caden Chung. And the man that we featured as the player to watch early was stopped again by Sean Melvin. Ball right at him. Whitecaps did have their chances, though. Ben McKendry cutting forward for Thomas Sanner. Just kept it in play, but wasn't really able to create much of a chance off of that one. Gloria Amanda got forward, played it in to Bustos, a great left-footed first-time strike, only inches over the bar. This was the best chance for the Whitecaps of the first half. Bustos off the crossbar, Amanda just over the bar on the second opportunity, actually touched over by the keeper, Zendejas, to keep it at nil-nil. Oliveira forward again down that right side. He's been threatening throughout the afternoon, was stopped by Melvin on that opportunity and that's where we sit nil nil through the opening 45 lots of shots for both clubs only one on target I would imagine it's that Amanda one that was tipped over the bar possession 71 to 29 for Swope Park Rangers but the Whitecaps hanging in there still at nil nil on the other side we'll have the second half from UBC's Thunderbird Stadium it is nil nil between Whitecaps FC2 and Swope Park Rangers back in just a moment. Take your shot at getting scouted. Come on out to our next camp. Meet a player. Hope to see you there.
Bender Bachelor back with you alongside Michael McCall. Nil nil at halftime. Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 and Swope Park Rangers as we get set to go here for the second half of what has been an entertaining match. Although as of yet we haven't had any intrusion I guess you could say or use for the video assistant referee which we were almost hoping for and you know on that Bustos chance that went off the crossbar and bounced down maybe they would have thought about having a look at it had it been a little bit closer but pretty decisively not in as we get a look at Sam DeVitt there who is in attendance here after being transferred to Cincinnati watching his now former teammates take on Swope Park Rangers I was having a little chat with him at half time and he's looking forward to his new adventure that lies ahead and hopefully leaving Vancouver with watching his former team get a win in the second half. I think to do it though, they can't give up the possession that they did in that first half. 71% for Swope Park Rangers. Surprising for me, I, I would have picked them to have the majority of the possession, but not by that great of a margin. It did feel in the opening minutes in particular that the Whitecaps hardly touched the ball. So I, if you could see a breakdown, it would be interesting to see. It did feel like that. As David Norman nicks the ball in midfield, long strike with his left foot, stopped by Zendejas across to his left. But good by Norman to win the ball, and with all sorts of time and space, had to go for a goal from a ways out. Now a long ball the other way towards Gonzalez. He'll bring it in. Back into midfield for Meloto. Wide to the right back, Dakota Barnetha. Hasn't seen a lot of the ball in the match. As Lebo Meloto gets it again in midfield. David Norman Jr. right there. That's a foul and a free kick in a pretty good spot for Swope Park Rangers early in this second half. It's already starting the second half the way that the first half went. End to end action. And a big opportunity for the visitors to draw first blood. Oliveira is going to stand behind it, as is Liam Doyle, the big center back. So you would probably back Oliveira to hit this maybe with his right foot. Could be in for a surprise, though. You never know. As Doyle does hit it with his left foot, pounds it into the wall. Then a second chance opportunity blocked away by Declan Wynn. Only as far as Barnathan. Thought about playing a cross in, but instead rolls it all the way back into his own half for Liam Doyle. Poor free kick there. There's a lot of room in the, the kind of postage stamp corner that he could have gone for there. He'll be disappointed that he hit that one so low. Now Mar on the far side. Possession conceded by Swope Park, then given right back by Marco Bustos for Whitecaps FC2, and then played right back to Caden Chung. Into the attacking half for the Whitecaps, but once again, in possession are Swope Park as the teams don't seem to want to keep the ball at the minute. There's a run forward by Amanda. Entry in there to help out, couldn't win it. And Mansell's cell ball is off to the races. Caden Chung back to the ball first for Sean Melvin. Melvin with his left foot played it forward. McKendry couldn't bring that in in midfield, but the Whitecaps have a throw in nonetheless. Neither team really able to, to keep hold of the ball, as you said, so far to start this half. It's like a hot potato out there just going from end to end. Which makes this a very unpredictable part of the match and could, as a result, provide for some surprises and maybe our first goal. Here's Selball forward, beats Amanda to the ball, turning the corner. Selball taken down by Amanda. And that'll be a goal kick, a good challenge by Amanda. Very close. If he'd mistimed that, it could have been a penalty. Or maybe a use for the VAR. And just this burst of speed here from Selbo. I mean, Amanda's fast, and Selbo just went right past him there. But good defensive work from Amanda. It's not something we've seen a lot from, from him. And in the first half, he was maybe struggling a little bit to get back defensively, but a great tackle there, well-timed. And as you said, mistimed that just by a second, that would have been a penalty. Now 
Barnathan. Passing back and forth with Gidic. He has to play it back to Zendejas. Whitecaps pressuring up the park here. And that goes out for a throw in. As Vancouver had three or four players up pressuring the back four who were having trouble in possession. I was away to say that I think the Whitecaps have the wind at their backs in this half, judging by the corner flag to our left. But then you look to the corner flags on the right, and they're blowing the opposite direction. Now here's McKendry, edge of the area, wide for win. Tried to curl that one in, blocked away by Barnathan. And I think they're going to call that a free kick for a handball. Dangerous position here for the Whitecaps. Just seeing this again. That looked to hit off his chest. I have to say, it didn't really look much of a handball there. Might have taken a touch briefly off his hand, but it was close either way. But McKendry will whip this one in. Would have been a corner. Instead, it's a little bit closer, or a fair bit closer. For Ben McKendry with his right foot. Santer and DeVries, a couple of the big men at that back post. Bartman in the box as well. Here's McKendry with his right foot. Headed over the goal by DeVries. He can't believe it hit in his hands. That was a glorious opportunity for Whitecaps FC2 that goes by the wayside. That was just lovely floated in here by McKendry. Perfect to the back post. Finding DeVries just over. He's looked good in the air and a, a bit of a threat in a couple of set pieces that the Whitecaps have had. And they've got the, the aerial presence for these set pieces from DeVries, from Siler, and from Sanner. And Amanda as well is a guy that we've seen is quite good in the air. So that might be a route that the Whitecaps look to go for in this half. Zendejas under pressure, pounds the ball out into touch. The Swope Park keeper. As the Whitecaps have pushed forward, getting bodies up the park. And Zendayas has been uh, a star so far for Swope Park Rangers. Signed an MLS deal with Sporting KC in the off-season. Hasn't made an appearance in MLS or in the US Open Cup yet, but they're obviously quite high in him, wanting to have a look at him here today. And he's definitely done well for himself with a couple of big, big saves in that first half. Lovely little move by Caden Chung to keep the ball and he'll dart forward out wide for Marco Bustos. Bustos, the Winnipeg product for Gloria Amanda. Whitecaps looking confident here. David Norman with all sorts of space. Pass to the edge of the area for Bustos, who shouted for a handball on Marr, who had intercepted that pass, but play will continue. McKendry. Rolls it back for Norman again for Amanda on that wide right side. Amanda steps over the ball. Can't dance around Marr though, who passes up the touchline for Selball. Selball high in the air to midfield, headed down by Norman Sanner for Nazim Bartman. Bartman to Amanda. Can he play across in with his right foot? He does just that. No one to meet it. At the other end, though, and Mark Anthony Gonzalez back all the way into his own box. Hammers it away for Oliveira. There's Duke in midfield. Out wide for Selball. Good challenge by Caden Chung sliding in. Quickly taken throw in by Swo Park. 54th minute, nil nil. Big collision. And a foul against Ben McKendry. Neither team having a minute to really think in the ball. It's just as soon as that one team gets the ball, they're getting closed down right away. No players really getting more than a few seconds to do anything. And they tried to take that quickly there, but referee's going to call this one back. James Musa now behind it. The referee will mark out a line for the wall. Ball played into the area. Mark Anthony Gonzalez. 
Played it to Marr, then got it back and conceded possession to Gloria Amanda. Then Gonzalez tracks back and wins it again. Nice ball ahead. Good job by Chung to head it down. Falling out was Gonzalez. Couldn't get a touch on it. Here he is again. Gonzalez, edge of the area. Passes back. Infield intended for sell ball. Rolled away from him, but Swope Park still have it. Threatening. At the edge of the Vancouver box. Oliveira. Gets the ball back from Duke. Now for Meloto. Can't find space. Whitecaps with the ball again. Norman trying to play it away. Conceded possession. And a long right footed strike well wide from Lebo Meloto. As we expect the Whitecaps to make a substitution here. Meyer Bevan is standing on the far touch line. And as we understand it, I think it's going to be Bevan on and Sanner off. So a like for like swap. Kind of like for like in big tall strikers, but Bevan's got a lot more pace and is a lot more mobile than Sanner. And Sanner's really struggled to, to get the ball at his feet today. So I think Bevan's going to add a little bit more up front than what Sanner has possibly had so far. Sanner more of a target man in that you want to play balls in for him to use his size to head. Whereas Bevan can play a bit more with the ball at his feet, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, and he's a good striker, the ball, Bevan, as well. And I think we're going to see a lot of good interaction in this second half between him and Bartman and Amanda. Amanda's definitely come more into the game in this half than he was in the first half. As he looks on and waits on that far touch line. Not sure how quickly the substitution will be made. Swope Park getting forward. Cleared away by DeVries as Moloto tried to play it in. And this will be a throw in for the visitors. Amanda in there confidently won the ball. And it's played out by Chung. Or did it stay in? Just held it on that far touch line. Now it's out. The Whitecaps win a throw. In. Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit NikeSoccer.com. And although you see Bevan over by the Vancouver bench standing in his full white kit, Rich Fagan has not elected to bring him on as of yet. There's Bevan on the right side of your screen. There's not a lot of attacking options on the bench for the Whitecaps today. They've got Tommy Gardner who can play a number of roles in the midfield. Yes, here they are getting forward. Crossed in by Sanner. Looking for Bartman, didn't reach him. Now Siler heads down for David Norman. Norman back for Siler across to DeVries. And back to Sean Melvin. They mentioned in there, Gardner is another possible sub for the Whitecaps in this half. Patrick Metcalf is the only other real attacking player. He's a midfielder, a residency alumni, and I think once Bevan comes on, there's not going to be too many more changes after that if the Caps need to try and do something to get into this game. Amanda can't quite get to the ball. It was just out of McKendry's reach. Caden Chung will follow up again for Amanda. Wide on the right side, crosses the ball in. Headed away, but only as far as Declan Wynn. Wynn. For DeVries. Again, Wynn gets it out wide for Bartman. Tried to flick that ahead for Bustos, but lost the ball. Now McKendry with a good challenge in midfield. No, he's going to be foul, called for a foul. I rated that decision as the Swope Park player that he collided with has gone down in a heap, and I believe that's Liam Doyle. Uh, I thought that was a good tackle as well. Just see this again here. In fact, it wasn't Doyle. It was James Musa, and just a little bit of a collision there, maybe an elbow into the rib cage unintentionally. And now we do get the substitution that will bring Thomas Shanner off and Meyer Bevan on. 
Bevin made his Whitecaps 2 debut back on June 24th. Has yet to open his account with the club. But will definitely have an opportunity to do that coming on here in the 60th minute. An exciting striker. If anyone was watching the Under-20 World Cup, you've seen Bevan in action there for New Zealand. Got a couple of goals for New Zealand. One of them a cracker against Honduras. Just 47 seconds into the game, was up for one of the goals of the tournament. We know that he can find the back of the net, and the Whitecaps will be looking to try and get the ball to him as much as possible for this remaining half hour. Here comes Swamp Park, though. Cell ball stopped again by Melvin. Another great save, and Nashville Cell ball can't believe it. He's had all sorts of chances this afternoon. And Sean Melvin has answered every question he's asked thus far. Melvin having an excellent outing this afternoon. Another big, big stop from him there. As the Whitecaps look to switch off at the back for a minute there and almost were caught because of it. Should mention, as we talked about, Whitecaps FC2 are home to Reno 1868 FC this coming Saturday, July the 15th, a 3 p.m. kickoff here at Thunderbird Stadium. After that, they go on the road until the first week of August. Wednesday, August 2nd, Rio Grande Valley FC will be in. And that'll be the second noon kickoff of the season. And that could be a chance for Whitecap fans to see Marco Carducci come back to play against his old club. And Swope Park Rangers make a change, and it's going to be Nansel Selball off after that great opportunity we you see there. And Carlton Belmar comes on. Melvin did so well to get down. Just watching that replay there, as we say, he's a big guy, but he gets down so fast for, for these. He's great point blank shot stopper and a chance here swoop right away on the break Belmar into the match 24 year old from Virginia formerly of Portland Timbers two four goals in 13 appearances this year for Swope Park Rangers so he's a threat as well as I mentioned earlier he is on an accumulation warning but on comes Belmar as these two sides continue to search for a goal in the 62nd minute. So you're, you take one guy off that's a danger, bring another guy on that's got more goals for, for Swope Park this, this year. It's like they're a team stacked with offensive players and you have to feel that they're going to really try and test this Whitecaps defence in the last half hour of this match. which will be a good challenge for the back four. At the same time, it could mean opportunities for those up front on the counter. And you know that the likes of Meyer Bevan, Marco Bustos, Gloria Amanda, Nazim Bartman will be ready to pounce if given the opportunity. And I think we've already just seen from these first couple of seconds on the pitch that Belmar is going to give Caden Chung a tough, tough task out there. Can't give him any space at all. And you wonder if that change at the front could potentially prompt a change at the back for Rich Vega to try and deal with the threat that Belmar provides. We've got a couple of options to, to bring on to kind of shore things up defensively. Dominic Zater, centre back, and Will Seymour, a very versatile player who can slot in in the back line or possibly into a holding midfield role. Whether that will happen or not remains to be seen. No white cap substitutes are warming up at the moment, while virtually all of the Swope Park substitutes are up and readying themselves. And as we've talked about, with a match coming up on Saturday and a squad that's dealing with some injuries and some players away, that could just be the lone change of the afternoon. Nathan. And the game on Saturday Nathan. is going to be a, another test, especially for the defence against a Reno side. First time Reno will have come to play up here. As Declan Wynn is booked for a challenge on Oliveira there, so Wynn earns a yellow card. Oliveira down clutching his face. As we'll hopefully get another look at the challenge. And yeah, 
You can see why he was clutching his face there. Might have got a forearm or a bit of an elbow right on the nose, as it were. Actually, Barnathan was the, the right guy back. that took that. But that's Oliveira there getting set to take the free kick. Oliveira with his right foot will have a chance. As Swope Park bring bodies forward into the box. Oliveira with his right foot played in and into the back of goal. There it is. 1-0 for the visitors. And forward to meet it and knock it in. It was the substitute, Carlton Belmar. Not a lot Melvin could do there. A great ball into the box. Really tested the Whitecaps defense. Belmar met it first and a great header. Or was it? As we get a look again, I didn't get a clean look at it. Indeed, it is Belmar right there with his head. Ties the team lead for goals. He's got five on the season, as does Gonzalez. Wonderfully taken free kick from Oliveira. Belmar heads it past Melvin, who's been so good this afternoon. But it is Swope Park Rangers ahead by a goal to nil in the 66th minute. Now, if you talk about an impact sub, that was one there for Swope Park Rangers. Belmar's looked so lively just in the few minutes he's been on the pitch. He's already given this Whitecaps defence a lot of problems. As you said, tying the, the lead now with five goals for the Rangers for the season. And he's looking hungry. He's already wanting to get back involved and get another one. Those are the kind of substitutions that coaches love. And you know, Nikola Popovich will be pleased after that change. Whitecaps back the other way. McKenzie tried to have a go from well out. It was blocked. And DeVries scampers back into his own half of the park. Big ask now for the Whitecaps to get themselves back into this one. They're going to have to try and use their wing play more. I mean, Bartman's shown a little bit of skill out here on the left. Try and get him and maybe Bustos and Bevan to interact a little bit more. Bartman in a lot of space, ball trying to find him here on the left. Doesn't reach him, though. And Bartman across, concedes a throw in. So it'll be interesting to see how this changes the game plan for Rich Fagan. Definitely not a lot of options that you can bring on to do anything. I think we are going to just see these guys see the next chunk of the game and, and see if they can get themselves back into it. And whether you push Bustos forward into more of an attacking position to support Bevan alone up front. That could be an option too, but... You expect Bartman and Amanda to be much more involved out on the flanks. Or you'd hope so, anyway. Yeah, I'd hope so. I mean, McKendry as well is a guy that I think you need to try and get the ball a bit uh, more. He's shown a couple of times this afternoon when he's run at this defence that he, he can really power through them. Possession conceded, though. Oliveira for Duke. Maloto tried to dance around the defender. His pass didn't connect. Bartman for McKendry, who is called for a foul as he blocked Christian Duke. And maybe got a hand or an elbow up on him. As Duke is now lying on the pitch. Yeah. Have another look at it here. And yeah, just an elbow to the chin or maybe the neck area accidentally from McKendry. Duke certainly made sure that the referee saw that there was contact there. He <laughs> threw his head back very fast. But he is dying. Suffering he? from a bit of whiplash now, maybe. Yeah, he lies he, on the seems to be in a little bit of discomfort part. here. Didn't look as bad really initially, but then he went down and he's not got back up again. And is receiving some assistance is another look at it here. Might have caught that right on the neck. And he actually walked a few paces before lying down. 
this could, I guess, potentially be one of the incidents that they use VAR for just to see if it was a red card offence. Although they haven't indicated that as of yet. For me, no intent in it. Yeah, I, I don't think there was too much in it. The way the VAR works, they also have like an assistant VAR person that can review stuff and then tell the main VAR person. So they can be reviewing it and then get a message to the referee. So the referee may not call it himself, but he can get a message to tell him that something has happened and he needs to review it. But yeah, it's on the internet. I did like a channel. But nothing coming of this apart from a, a free kick to Swope Park Rangers. 20 minutes to go. I'm talking about the video review. The main principle is that it's only really going to be used to correct errors for missed incidents or affect match changing decisions. So it isn't something that's going to be used multiple times during your average match. No, it's something I'm, I'm pleased to see. I was a little bit unsure at first, but having seen it in various competitions and we saw it in the Confederations Cup and the Under-20 World Cup, I, I'm all for it. I, anything that can be used to improve the game and to get better decisions made during the game so that you're not doing things afterwards is all for that. The main concern amongst traditional football or soccer types is the amount of time that it will take up. And that's why I was almost interested or hopeful that we would see some sort of decision that required it this afternoon. Yeah. Just to see what that time impact could be. As of yet, it hasn't been called for, though. No, it's still time. We never know what might happen. And I mean, this is one of the, a number of things which are being discussed just now to try and improve the game by IFAB, the International Football Association Board. They issued a report a couple of weeks back with a number of uh, different suggestions. Some of them great, some of them not so sure about, including like cutting the, the game down to 80 minutes of actual playing time. That's not something I see happening in the near or even distant future. No, I mean, there, there were some good suggestions in that. If, any, if anyone's interested, certainly go online and check that out. There's a lot of discussion happening at the moment. A lot of it is just suggestions, and they're trying to get feedback as to what fans might think. One nil for Swope Park Rangers over Vancouver Whitecaps FC2. 73rd minute at UBC Thunderbird Stadium. Brendan Batchelor and Michael McCall with you this afternoon. Thanks for joining us for the early kickoff. And a free kick for Vancouver. With David Norman and Ben McKendry standing behind it. And a chance to try and pull on to level terms. Norman with his left foot curling it to the back post. Bartman tried to send it towards the goal, but it wasn't enough on that headed chance. Not really a lot Bartman could do with that ball. As we have another upcoming substitution for Swope Park Rangers. Ben McKendry shown a yellow card, I believe, on that last incident although it was a Vancouver free kick but we are expecting Mark Anthony Gonzalez to leave the match and coming on for him is going to be Cameron Iwasa it looks like Thomas Gardner is going to be coming on for the White Caps too along with Will Seymour in a double substitution here so the change is being made for both sides. And it'll be interesting to see 
whether this changes Vancouver's shape at all. Chasing with Swope Park Rangers a goal to the good. And only about 15 minutes of normal time to play. It would give them the opportunity to go three at the back, which they have done a couple of times this season. Seymour could definitely slot back there beside DeVries and Siler. There goes Gloria Amanda for Thomas Gardner. Declan Wynn. Will Seymour for Declan Wynn. Or sorry, Will Seymour for David Norman. Yeah, the wrong number was put in there. They <laughs> put in 62 instead of 42. That makes a bit more sense. I wasn't really sure how my <laughs> win was coming off there. So we'll wait and see whether this changes much of the shape of the Whitecaps as McKendry is chopped down by Oli Vela. Whitecaps take the free kick quickly. Chung. Nice little bit of skill to cut in field. Now he darts away into the attacking half, but gave up possession. And Swope Park Rangers have four men getting forward. Nice interception there by Declan Wynn. Seymour in midfield for DeVries. Out wide for Nazim Barton. Back for Seymour. Saw off some pressure from Oliveira. And now DeVries with it. Again for Seymour, Caden Chung getting forward up that right side. Passes to Thomas Gardner ahead for Ben McKendry, who goes down in a heap. And the Whitecaps can see the throw. -in. And Gardner seems to have slotted into the role that Amanda had, playing up front here on the right hand side. Caps look to have gone to a 4 3 3. Bartman gets it in midfield, win ahead to his left. Bartman holding on to the ball is fouled by Oliveira and wins a free kick. Seems to be in a, quite a bit of discomfort here. It will regain his footing. As he tried to cut back in and Oliveira just clipped. His ankle there. <laughs> Maloto coming off for Swope Park. And coming on is Felipe Hernandez, the Colombian. And another product of the Sporting Kansas City Academy. Marco Bustos behind this one. Curls it towards the back post. Punched away by the keeper. DeVries couldn't get a touch on it as he was waiting to try and hit it home. Now Seymour with another long ball into the box towards Bartman. That's dealt with. Short park and now Oliveira runs back through midfield. Siler back to try and deal with it. Couldn't win the ball. Here's Oliveira. Gives it right to Will Seymour. I think he was looking for Belmar up that left side. Then Oliveira wins the ball back again. Waiting field for Musa. Now it's with Hernandez. To Barnathan. Hernandez, just 19. He's been a member of the U.S. under-19 squad for a number of years now. And we're having a look at him on under-20 level as well recently. Belmar, the... Goal scorer this afternoon gets the ball out wide on that left side. Now it's played forward. Iwasa looking to run on to that. Couldn't find it. And now a free kick for Swell Park. Been quite a few free kicks in the last few minutes. So the game's kind of stopping and starting, which is going to suit Swope Park Rangers. They don't want the Whitecaps to try and get into any rhythm in these closing minutes and working to perfection right now. Just a short free kick. Or are they going to bring it back and make them do it again? Indeed they are. 
Stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune in to USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts. Mondays at 6 o'clock Pacific time on Sirius XM FC Channel 85. Also, don't forget Sirius XM FC airs the USL Game of the Week. Check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. There's Belmar out wide, turning the corner into the area, getting forward. Plays it back, Oliveira can't hit it. Now does with his left foot just over the bar. Tremendous work from Belmar to get around along the byline and create that chance, and Oliveira just skies it. Belmar, as we said, has looked fantastic on here. I mean, burst of pace, hitting the sideline, and a lovely cutback. Oliveira couldn't hit it first time as Wynn got out to close him down. I think that was a let off for the Whitecats there. Wynn just got there in time to put him off, otherwise he had a clear strike and goal. And Belmar has definitely added a spark to the Swope Park team since he's come on. Whitecats struggling to keep possession at the moment. We talked about those halftime possession stats. A little more even in the second half, I think it's fair to say. But on the whole, you would imagine that Swope Park is still playing with the ball a lot more than Vancouver. Yeah, starting the second half, the Caps definitely enjoyed a lot more possession than they saw in the first. But Swope Park controlling the game now. Since the goal, they've not really looked troubled at all. I mean, you coming into this, they're a very, very dangerous team, especially on the offensive side. And they've shown that today on course right now to make it five straight wins, a club record. Whitecaps will look for an equalizer. Win getting forward, infield for Bustos. Nice ball ahead, Bevan couldn't get there. And Oliveira try to run back towards the halfway line. We'll see more intercepts and Katie Chung cuts it ahead. Chung darting forward, tried to play it through for Bustos. Couldn't get there, and here's Belmar away to the races again down the left side. Gardner coming back, trying to close him down. And it does knock it out of play. Gardner did well there. Chung was out of position from that for Ray forward. So, I mean, you don't want to give Belmar space at the best of times, never mind when you're a man short back there. And the Whitecaps really haven't had an answer for Carlton Belmar since he came into the match. He's got the lone goal of the game. Swope Park just happy to keep the ball in the white caps end just now, just see the clock run down. As it's played out for another throw in. And you understand why they're a side that has had such success this year. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're closing the gap in the top. They've, they're closing quickly on San Antonio just above them. They're currently sitting third in the West. They were 14 points off first place heading into this one, but with two games on hand. Real Monarchs leading the way for a long time now. Oh, and a long range effort there. I think that was Hernandez. Well wide, but speaks to the young man's confidence that he tries from that sort of distance. Goal kick for Sean Melvin. Meyer Bevan heads that down for Gardner. Nazim Barton darting forward up the left side, cuts in field, played it across and behind Bevan. And to collect is Zendejas, the keeper. That looked positive, though. Bartman did find some space in field and just couldn't connect with a pass. I think the big problem for the Whitecats today is Sander in the first half, Bevan so far since he's come on, they've just not had a chance to, to get them the ball and give them much of a sniff of goal. And if that continues, it's hard to see how the Caps are going to get back into this. Seymour ahead for Bevan, trying to bring the ball down. And he's fouled as a result. Here's a chance for a free kick and a good spot. And I was about to say Bevan hasn't really had much of an impact on the match, but did well to win the free kick there as he's pulled down by the shirt 
by Liam Bo Doyle. Yeah, tugged all over the place there. And you do feel that set pieces are going to be the way that the Whitecaps might get into this. We've seen it with the first team this year. It's like both clubs have worked really hard in improving their set pieces and their delivery. And we've lost Davy Norman now. He's been the guy that sent a lot of these balls in. And so Marco Bustos will stand behind this. Have to feel the Vries or Bevins who they're going to look for here. Cleared away only as far as Seymour, who has a go on a half volley chance, and that went well over the bar. He's arguing that it took a touch off one of the defenders, but it'll be a goal kick nonetheless. Dangerous ball into the box, really tested the defense here, but no Whitecaps pressure. And I think that just went straight out. Yeah, no touch at all there. Disappointing not to see a white catch player trying to pressure the ball as it went there. It was a clearance that was under no pressure whatsoever. And now in the 86th minute, Vancouver will have to pressure up the park, which means they could be open to opportunities at the back like this one. Carlton Belmar holding possession on that left side. Siler trying to stay right with him. Belmar back into midfield for Musa. Jidic. For Doyle and all the way back through to the keepers in Dejas. Everything's going through Belmar in the attack just now for Swope Park Rangers. White Capsule look to get forward and quickly if they can. With time running out on them. Late in the match. Siler towards Bustos. Couldn't head that down. And a good challenge there, sliding in by Siler to win the ball. Now Seaborn. Ball ahead of Bartman. Headed back to the keeper by Barnathan. And so Dejas is going to be Content to take his time and force Bevan to run towards him before he picks up the ball. I've been impressed with Swope Park Rangers this afternoon. Definitely one of the best teams we, we've seen to play the Whitecaps this season. Attacking strength all over the pitch. They're going to do well, I think, for the rest of this year. Whitecaps will feel hard done by. They did have chances, particularly in the first half. Bustos off the crossbar. Amanda just over the bar. Or rather, just tipped over the bar by the keepers in Dejas. Yeah, the Caps definitely will do those opportunities. They haven't had many, but you have to, when you're in a game like this and you know you're not getting many chances, you have to try and make one of those pay, and unfortunately they didn't. Still some time, though. As Bustos has some time and space to work with. Nicely played infield for Barton. Gardner hustling forward. Can't bring that one in. But it's going to be a corner kick for Whitecaps FC2. And as you said, set pieces can change a match like this, and the Whitecaps will hope that they can do just that. Yeah, DeVries has had a, a couple of half chances this afternoon. Just moving into the box here. He's moving around. Now Gardner. DeVries couldn't meet it, neither could Bevan, but Seymour has it back in midfield. Back for Declan Wynn. Under two minutes of normal time to go. And I don't think we'll have too much stoppage time as there hasn't been very many delays. No, I think three minutes max might be all the white caps would have here. And they'll be disappointed that from a corner, the ball ends up back at Melvin, and they just couldn't put any pressure on this defense. They'll try again, though. Bartman. Bevan's gone way offside. He's having to get himself back here. Yeah, Swope Park playing a pretty high line. In fact, I think we will see 
quite a few minutes of stoppage time. We'll wait for the indication from the fourth official, but we're hearing could be four minutes, maybe more. A little bit of a surprise there, but good news from a White Cats perspective. As Seymour loses possession. And here is a chance. Oliveira forward. Into midfield for Musa. Swell Park in possession, don't want to concede it. Content to try and run time off the clock. And this will be a throw in. Here's the youngster Hernandez getting forward. Went down, regained his footing, won the ball back too. Hernandez did well there to win the ball back and get a throw in now for Swope Park. Fucked away with authority by Will Seymour. They'll be happy just to keep the ball at this end of the park now for these closing minutes. It is four minutes of added time, so that's what we've got to go here. Whitecaps desperately trying to win possession back. And offside ruled there against Iwasa, so Vancouver will get the ball back with only minutes to go. There's Bustos running onto the ball down that right side. Watched closely by a couple of Swope Park players. Means a throwing. It's a swoop part throw, and it looks like Bustos ran the ball out there. Nice pass by Gardner to set Bustos up on that move there. He would cut inside, hoping to get the ball back, but unfortunately, Bustos just ran it out. Whitecaps do get the ball forward, and there's a foul. So a free kick for Vancouver. And they haven't really had any of the momentum for the last quarter of an hour or so, but none of that matters now. If you can snatch your goal here, you snatch a point and you grab two away from Swope Park and you prevent them from winning their club record fifth consecutive game. It's centered to the box to Vries rising for it. Couldn't quite get there and that runs out for a goal kick. Again, it's De Vries central in that potential opportunity, but couldn't quite get his head on it. He definitely seems to be the guy that they're trying to find with these balls into the box, but they've just been over hit a lot this afternoon. The wind will play a part in that. It's if you can see the corner for Higgs and also the video assistant referees table, it's really, really picked up in this second half. Difficult to play with, difficult to play against. As neither side have really had very much success from set pieces, of course, with the exception of the goal by Belmar. Which is brilliantly taken by Belmar. And I think Rich Fagan will look back on this if it stays the same. He'll be disappointed they haven't taken anything from that. They did have their chances. They've played really well in, in patches against a really good team. As Bevan cuts forward, tried to play it to Bartman, comes back to Bevan. He's got a chance to hit it with his right foot. And a tremendous save. Diving to his left was Zendejas to grab that. And that's one of those moments that they could have snatched a goal and grabbed a point, and instead Zendejas snatches the chance away from Meyer Bevan. And Bevan's not had much of a chance to do anything, but that shows you what he can do. Made space for himself well, a great shot. But Zendejas has been fantastic in goal for Swope Park this afternoon, and another big, big save there from him. And you have to imagine, mere seconds away from a clean sheet. With Swope Park back in the attacking third, looking to keep the ball and run time off the end of the game. And this would be Swope Park Rangers' sixth clean sheet and 16 outings. So solid defensively. We talked how dangerous they are in attack, but they've shown that they are very good defensively as well. And although they do have all those players who have goals in them up front, they've only needed one this afternoon, and I think that does speak to just that. 
ball out by the corner flag. Iwasa protecting it. And that's the end of the match. Carlton Belmar, the lone goal. Off the substitutes pitch and into the back of the net. And Swope Park Rangers win their club record fifth straight game by a goal to nil over Vancouver Whitecaps FC2. Yeah, the Whitecaps will feel that they could have got something from this. Winless now in six, it's something that they're going to want to try and turn around quite quickly. They're going to get an opportunity to do that when Reno 1868 come to Thunderbird on Saturday. But Smoke Park definitely just looked better offensively. They had the more dangerous players up front. They were clinical when it mattered, and Belmar was the guy that changed the game from him when he came on. 1-0 is the final. On the other side, we'll have the highlights and final match stats as Swope Park Rangers take all three points at Thunderbird Stadium this afternoon. And once you go upstairs, the second level is basically split in two halves. One is the first team half, and then the other is WFC2 and Academy. So it creates a separation and aspirational motivation to move towards the first team side. First class, man. First class. They thought of everything. And, and they put me next to a bunch of these Americans in here. So I might need to change that up. Yo, hablo espanol. So, oh, next to the goalkeeper. That definitely needs to change. Come on. Oh, yeah. Everything is controlled by this locker right here. So every morning you have to come and tell me what music we want. So far, it's really nice. Uh, the locker room is great. The locker room is really good. Definitely surprised me. Definitely surprised. I'm really happy. With it. It's a uh, European style with uh, a lot of technology, and uh, obviously for for us, uh, how the club is taking care of the players, uh, giving us the the tools to step every day in training. Uh, with everything we need, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, very nice. I've never seen anything like it. No? See, European style. Like open, you can see face to face. One nil the final from Thunderbird Stadium this afternoon as Swope Park Rangers win their fifth straight game defeating the home side Vancouver Whitecaps FC2. Let's take a look at the full match stats from this afternoon's game. The possession heavily in favor of Swope Park in the first half came back down to earth a little bit but not much 64 percent to Swope Park. They get the lone goal 14 shots as well only six of them on target Sean Melvin was busy Carlton Belmar with the lone goal gives the three points to Swope Park this afternoon as we take a look back at the highlights from this afternoon's game a matinee here at Thunderbird Stadium and I said Melvin had work to do he had work to do early in the first half stopped Oliveira on the first chance got across well to deny sell ball on a second opportunity Whitecaps had some good looks in the opening 45 as well Marco Bustos off the crossbar glory Amanda forcing the keeper Adrian Zendaya has to tip that over the crossbar and it was nil nil through 45 in the second half. Carlton Belmar came on after Nancel Selball had a great chance there it was stopped by Melvin and then off a free kick Oliveira into Belmar fresh into the match and headed into the back of goal. Belmar's now tied for the team lead with five goals on the season along with Mark Anthony Gonzalez his fifth of the year. 
put the visitors ahead by a goal to nil. And that was the way it finished here this afternoon at UBC's Thunderbird Stadium. For Michael McCall, I'm Brendan Batchelor. Thanks so much for joining us again. Whitecaps FC2 host Reno 1868 FC this coming Saturday. That'll be a 3 p.m. Pacific time afternoon kickoff. If you want to come out to the match, you can go to whitecapsfc2.com to get your tickets. Or you can join us right here on the USL YouTube broadcast. Once again, thanks for joining us and good afternoon from Vancouver. <laughs> the telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the express written consent from the United Soccer League.